anybody here by raise a hand or 0311s? Raise your hand. Okay. How many were uh, 0331? Is that a machine gunner? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think 0331? Anybody? Randy, what, were you, what was your MOS? 2531. Field you were radio official operator. 2531. 2531. He's a real thing. Yeah. Radio operator. Yeah. Okay. Dennis, what, what was your MOS? That? that was the same thing. Oh, you, you were both. Okay, so two of you out of the whole group were, were actually trained on radio yeah. before you got Yeah, they them. took us and they gave us four weeks of how to turn it on and off. Four <laughs> weeks to learn how to turn it on and off. Right, exactly. That's what we learned. Four weeks, yep. Well, the rest of us got four minutes to figure it out, okay? All right, except for the two of you, all the rest of us and um, I'm going to stand here next to the mic for a minute here because I'm included. Okay. Um, I don't know if um, we, we were just stupid guys or what, yeah. but we all decided to, as, um, as combat Marines, to pick up a radio because we saw the value in it. Okay. So uh, tonight I thought what we'd do is we'll go back in time and see how much they remember about their radio, okay? Wait, wait a minute. Yes, Jack? I, I can't think of maybe nobody up here who decided they were going to carry a radio. <laughs> I volunteered. Did anybody else volunteer? Oh, he's stupid. No. Hell, <laughs> hell no. You are they they gave it to him. They us. gave it to you? No, they, they I turned it down. My squad leader said, go over there, pick up that radio, Put it on and follow me. I looked at him and I thought, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> I got a better one for you. I got a good one for you. Okay. I was walking across the street and the guy got killed and he told me to drag the radio and leave the guy. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Anybody else want to tell how they got theirs? Yeah, I showed up uh, Taylor Common 1 <laughs> towards the end of it in January. My squad leader starts that, you know, where are you from, how are you doing? Uh, he said, uh, want some gum? Gave me a piece of uh, Beeman's chewing gum. Talking a little bit more, and he goes, uh, do this. So I do that, and we a few more questions. And, work. and he says, uh, say one alpha. And I said, one alpha? Wait a minute. Say one alpha and do this. <laughs> so, you know, I'm too scared to do anything, but I know I'm being screwed with. And he says, Damn, if, if you can do this, squeeze your hand and say one alpha at the same time. And I give it a try, and I'm a winner. And he says, congratulations, you're my new radio operator. <laughs> okay, all right. Somebody else wanna, wanna tell us? What's that? Uh, I'll, I'll tell mine, okay. Um, we came down off of Taylor Common. When I say come down off, we were up in the mountains. Yes. And uh, so we came down off of Taylor Mountain, uh, Taylor Common, and uh, where'd they put us? Right back out in the Arizona Territory. And so uh, we were in the middle of a firefight, and uh, it ended, and uh, my platoon leader came up to me and said, um, go over there and uh, pick out which one of the four radios you want to take. So I went over and looked at all four radios, and um, um, three out of the four had a lot of blood on them. And the, uh, the other one, it looked like it was pretty new, okay? So uh, I said, okay, I'll take that one. I had no idea what I was getting into at the time, um, but uh, that's how I got a hold of my radio. All right, um, I'm gonna do a little quiz here, and uh, we're gonna see uh, how well these guys do. Um, our Vietnam radio operators from 1966 to 71, uh, for those that are here at the reunion, uh, that happens to be me, uh, okay? Uh, are you sure? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> okay. All right, I have no idea what my eyes were doing, but, uh, but uh, yeah, that was me. And that's my PRC 25 there, okay? All what, right. What do Mike, we call stand up and come over here. 25. And tell us who is that? And what do you got there? What are you doing? Showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a picture for my dad. <laughs> I, 
sent home. I don't here. remember the picture, uh, <laughs> but that's a Rick 25. That's a spare battery. Rick 25, yeah. 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 Okay, any idea where that picture might have been taken? <coughs> In the rear somewhere, probably in Wong. Probably in Wong? Okay, what year? I'm going to say 69. Sometime in the past. Okay, 69. Well, I spent more than half my tour as a grunt. And then when the radio operator got shot, yeah, I weighed 155 pounds. So <laughs> we all did. <laughs> <laughs> the radio in our gear was yeah. half of my Excuse weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, Are you with that now? Yeah. The radio operator got, got killed. And, they asked me if I wanted it. Okay. I'll do it. All right. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Well. Okay. Dennis, you want to stand up and uh, tell us a little bit? Of, now, well, you were good looking back in the day. What happened? Wow. Wow. That's what he said. Yeah. 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 You don't. You don't have to take that. Oh, you don't have to take that. You can sit down. You don't have to put up. Now you have the radio and. Well, that was your MOS, so tell us a little bit about uh, your, your training um, on the MOS, uh, training on the radio. Well, I didn't start out as a, you know, as a 2531. Uh, when I first joined, I, I was going to be a 2571, which is a special radio operator. <laughs> but anyway, that's one where you sit at the table with the power rider and you have a, you, you, know, you know, listen to Morse code all day long. And so we had to go to an army school, about 60 of us, to learn that. And I hated that. I just pure hated it. And I mean, you know, I was like, man, I didn't want it for this. It was a lot more fun getting the shot at, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I said, that's what I wanted, I thought. But anyway. So, you know, we got through the school. It was about a four month school up in uh, Fort Devens, Massachusetts. And uh, that was a, you know, that was a neat place, but anyway. Uh, so we all finished it. There was about 60 of us, and they sent 30 of us to Hawaii, and 30 of us went down to Camp Geiger, second radio battalion. But the kicker was, in a way, the lifesaver, for me anyway, is that you had to have a top secret clearance to be a special radio operator. Well, there were a few of us, I'm not sure about the Hawaii group, but those of us who went to uh, Camp Geiger, about 30 of us, yeah, five or six of us, we didn't make the cut. We couldn't get, you know, we weren't cleared for the top secret clearance. I got a, a secret, you know, a good buddy got a good, uh, you know, confidential, which was lower. He asked me what, what happened. I said, what happened to you? I mean, you know what I have. But, uh, well, you know, my brother's in prison. I mean, you know, but anyway. Uh, no, his brother, you know. But, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so anyway, we got, you know, kicked out of that. So then they tried to, of this friend of mine and a few others, they tried to send a motor pool. For some reason, that didn't work out very well either, so they sent us over to uh, Camp Lejeune to, uh, this was uh, 2 8. So I went to H and S 2 8 to the comm platoon. You know, anyway, so they were getting ready to ship out. Well, in about a month or so, they was going down to Cuba. And so when they shipped out to go down there, we got on a you know, ship there at, uh, uh, what's that place I always, uh, I was, I was middle block. Anyway, it's a place where you get on the ships there in North Carolina, and about a four-day trip down to Cuba. But anyway, I was sent over to, uh, you know, I was attached to Fox Company as uh, the battalion operator. Only the problem was I didn't know anything about a radio. I never even touched one at that time. So on well, my records, they, I mean, my uh, orders, they said you're going to be uh, OJT. They actually said that, you know, the job training, and so. So I, I was, so we got to Cuba. And so uh, in Fox Company 2-8, about 85 to 90% of the guys there, that, you know, they'd already been to Vietnam. There's only a few of us hadn't gone yet. Anyway, the, the company operator, who was in 0311, most of the guys here, he had already been to Nam, he'd been a squad, a platoon operator in, in Vietnam. A Corporal Howard was his name. I was placed under his you know, supervision. And he, so he trained me you know, how to become the radio man. And so, unlike Randy, who's also a 2531, I am too, but I never went to Cobb School. I was actually taught by an 0311, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, even the company commander, you know, he said to me one day, you know, when I had been there very long, he said, well, you know, Casey, when you first got here, you didn't know a darn thing about that video, did you? I said, well, no, so I did, you know. 
Well, old Howard's done a pretty good job getting you trained, you know, so you, you know, I think you'll be okay. So anyway, that's how it came on. And, uh, but I, I didn't go to comm school. I just, like I said, I learned it from a, a guy who really knew it because he'd already been through the Vietnam War as a, you know, radio man himself. So even though he and I never got along real good, I had a lot of respect for him and we, you know, and, and he was a good teacher. You know, I feel like I did pretty good. Yeah. That's how I came to it. <laughs> How many of you guys, by show of hands, was a squad radio operator? Squad. That's where we all started, okay? Uh, how many went to a platoon radio operator? Okay. How many went to company radio operator? Okay. Uh, what goes next, guys? Uh, how many went to uh, some S1, S2, S3, S something? Okay. That was Jay. Uh, all right, uh, how many went to battalion? I went to battalion, so I'll put my hand up. Okay, there's four of us. I, I, yes, I, I was a 1 4 guy, if you know what 1 4 is. 1 4? Tactical air control. I called in the airstrikes and the medevacs and the gunships, and uh, that's what I was trained at. Uh, so I, I, I wasn't a battalion. I was tactical air control party, hotel company 1 4. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you did, uh, uh, yes. You yes. know, also too, like with the company commander, he had two radio men, men at all times. You know, Jay knows, yeah. and, and Dan. And, but actually, one of them was actually called the uh, battalion, battalion operator. Right, right, battalion operator and the company operator. But the right. company operator almost always was an 0311, and the battalion operator, like say Sam Monica. Sam Monica, you know, yeah. You know, you know, he was a 2531. He also. Or they would also come from H uh, and S company of the battalion. In this case, right. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. Um, uh, there's a picture for everybody to see. Okay. <laughs> all right. Who's it, who's the guy on the right side? Anybody recognize who he is? Roman. Who? Roman. Nah. Come on. That mustache <laughs> couldn't be. Barry, is that you? Really? That's Kiwi. It is. It was Kiwi. 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 <laughs> All right. Lieutenant Broman standing right there. Okay. Um, and so you guys can kind of see uh, how some of us carried our radios. Um, and and uh, we always had them high up on our backs. And we had to, um, while we're walking and while we're getting shot at, Sometimes we, we would have to reach back and try to adjust uh, our volume or turn the squelch off or something uh, on the radio um, as we're moving ahead. Notice every operator, every radio operator here um, had in his other hand his M16. How many of you had a 45 strapped to your waist? Okay. Yeah, most of us uh, all had a 45 as well as our M16, right? Yeah, but, um, but we only had the 45 because it was cool. <laughs> ne never used it. But you never it was, used it? No, hell no. I did. I, did. I, I, shot I, did with my I, I never carried an M16. You were an M14? I was an M14 automatic rifle the entire time. Wow. <laughs> but that shot a lot better. Pardon? How much extra weight was the M14? With ammo? Yeah, with ammo. Uh, a little over 18 pounds. Okay. I didn't care. On, on top of the 30 pounds of the radio yeah. battery, on top of all our personal gear, on top of the fact that we had to carry our own sea rations, okay? <laughs> so we carried a, a lot of, of weight. And, uh, um, all right. Um, Thomas Hood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I took that picture of I carried five. Oh, here, you yeah, took that picture. We were, we were actually walking up to the Boudins from uh, from Anhua, and I was walking. I didn't know Tony, and I was walking past. I had my camera. He said, "Doc, take my picture." <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Tony, Tony, how how many days was that before you got your serious wound? How many days was that? Mm, maybe a week or so. <laughs> wow, that was in March, right? That was in March. Yeah, it was a week. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, thank you. I'm <clears throat> glad you took that picture. All right, uh, Jay, um, rumor has it that uh, Thomas Moon taught you how to use the radio. No, Is I that didn't. true? No, he didn't. He didn't? It no, he was supposed to, 
He was supposed to. Yeah. Would, would you tell us a little bit about him? Well, as a radio operator and maybe a jeep driver. Well, Moon, Moon. He was a skater. He didn't want to do anything, and he was very successful at it. I, he was. He he got it to an art, and. You know, I really did get the radio from my squad leader who did the hand thing and, and chewing gum. And Moon had moved up from first squad. I was taking his place as a radio operator, but he he went to um, Lieutenant Brookshire up there on Taylor Common. And he, he had risen to the pinnacle of success. He is now the radio operator for the platoon commander. And he wasn't doing nothing. He, he didn't want to train me. That wasn't his job at that point in time. It was Sammy Jacobs' job, who was the squad leader, who gave me the damn radio. And so I didn't learn a thing from uh, Moon. I did, too. I, I, he, um, he taught me a few things about how to avoid work. And it, it was very good. Yeah. For those who don't know, he passed away, I think. It was, he, uh, yeah, he March. just passed away, yeah. Yeah, he passed away in March. I yes. took that photo. You took that photo? And the moon is asking for directions on how to get to the Nang. Yeah. Okay. All right. Randy, stand up and tell us what this is about. Four eyes. Uh, basically, uh, we just got through clearing out an area and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I was just a dumb idiot kid. Uh, they didn't know what they were doing. But I did have air. Look at the air there. Yeah, I don't anymore. But yeah. <laughs> and it was blonde and everything. But uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to me was getting to a hotel company. I won't tell you how I got there. But anyhow, uh, and Captain Drez, Ron Drez, was uh, a mentor that I still try to model my life after. And I'll tell you a quick story. We were in the uh, Arizona Territory, and we'd been clouded in, and everything was crappy, and we weren't getting resupplied. We had, were out of water, we were out of bullets, and uh, all of a sudden, our first resupply comes in. There's this big crate, crate of an old 250 bomb sitting in it, but it's lined with styrofoam, and inside of it, it's got Dixie cups with dry ice in it. And I said, Skipper, I know, what's going on? He said, well, you invited all the seniors and all the village people in, and we're treating them to ice cream. I sat there, okay, we can open it up, we open it up. They told us where every booby trap was, where every VC was, where every tunnel was, and Captain Ron Drez never burned a ooch. He honored the people that lived in Vietnam. He's the most honorable man I ever served with. And thank him. Thank you, thank you. Randy, do you still have that six pack? No. No? No, 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 no. Wow. I don't have he was the, a strong guy. He I don't have the air and I don't have the six pack. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have a voice. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> David is a newcomer to me, so I, I don't really know anything about your radio experience, so you get to tell us, but uh, I think your wife needs to uh, stand up and, and show that picture of him, okay? Um, I, I wish I'd had it, I would have had it in my slide here, but uh, <coughs> while she's getting the picture up, Dave, you, you want to tell us Well, yeah, you know, like, your experience? These guys were saying nobody chooses to carry the radio. And at least in golf company, the new guys are the ones that get the radio. <laughs> so I think maybe a month after I was in golf, then I, got, I inherited the radio, and the Prick 25. And the good thing about it is you know what's going on, because you hear the company operator or whatever calling airstrikes, or where we're moving to or whatever. So. Um, you're very informed about what's going on. So from that standpoint, I liked it. And then different from some of these pictures, I had my antenna in, in plastic and my handset was wrapped in plastic too because of the rain, of course. And uh, I remember I had uh, a relative that sent me, you know, one of those 
portable radios and you can't get those kind of batteries over there but when the uh, the main radio's battery is down to nothing and can hardly be used it's like perfect for those transistor radios exactly that's what we always use we use them all the time yeah, yeah. and uh and, and I, I learned a phonetic alphabet, of course, Alpha Bravo Charlie, all that kind of thing. Oh, and then a couple, there was a code we had where it was like the word Cadillac or something, and then you put, you know, the first letter C would be stand for one, and the next letter would be two, and, and so you'd use those letters to convey numbers, whatever the code word was. And, uh, and then also I remember all I really remember is the word steel was code for a soldier. So you'd, you'd call in your count, uh, 62 steel, and then there was a, other code words for ammo and other things that you'd call in. And then our radios were used, of course, every night for the listening teams, four-man listening teams that would go out, they'd take a radio with them and use their handsets every hour to signal if they're okay or not so more often than not in the middle of the night there was no response because everybody fell asleep <laughs> anyway it was if all secure in the bushes give me two pushes yeah, yeah something like that so that's about it for my memories i carried a 45 but i had a shoulder holster okay you had a shoulder holster yeah okay. yeah that's what i yeah all right thank you Stand up, tell us about this picture. Who is this guy? Well, just so you know, when I went in country, I weighed 188 pounds. In this picture, I weigh less than 160. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's a cigar. I smoked that cigar the first, last, and only time of my life back at the Hoochananwa. And how that came to be was I was a radio operator and they offered me R&R. &R. Well, the people who really know me know that I'm Tell one. Tell what R&R &R means. <laughs> Rest and recreation. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> recreation. So you could go to a, another country and pay a lot of money for booze and women and everything else. Well, <laughs> the people who really know me know that I'm frugal. That doesn't count as cheap, <laughs> just frugal. So I went to China Beach. I got there the first day, the sun was shining wonderfully. I got a rack, I had ba bacon and eggs and fresh milk, and then three or four beers and I went to sleep. I slept for almost 20 hours straight. Got up, re redid that again and did it again. I was only supposed to be there four days. We got fogged in in Da Nang, so I couldn't get out. <clears throat> After the third day, we finally got enough sunlight so that the helicopter could take <coughs> off and take me back to Anwa. On the way, I asked the driver to stop at the PX so I could make amends by getting a box of cigars for the people back in my platoon. And one for the CO, Captain Doherty, and one for the First Sergeant, First Sergeant Peabody. <laughs> yeah, he was a pain in the eye. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, long story short, so I, give, I stop at the company office, I give them that, I go down to my hooch, and the hooch next to it, it has our platoon in it, both of them, and I hand out all these cigars and we all light up. Like I said, that's the first, last, and only time I have smoked a cigar. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Quick, uh, just go down the line, um, starting with Mike. Uh, tell us uh, where you went for R and R. Hawaii. Hawaii. Never went. You didn't go. Bangkok. 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 Hawaii. Hawaii. I didn't make time. I didn't go. You didn't go. China yeah. Beach, yeah. Penang. China Beach. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was saving mine up for the tenth or eleventh month, and I never made it that far, so <laughs> didn't get to go. So you didn't get to go. Okay. I ended up going to Sydney, Australia. So uh, I had I had to wait ten months, but I, I went to Sydney. Um, all right, Jay, who is this kid here? Well, that's what were a, you 17, 16, 15? No, I was I was eighteen by then, and probably fast. No, that was me. So I'd actually turned nineteen by then. Yeah, 
um, that that is the product of hard work and training. I was at that point in time the um, company radio operator. In the booths. Yeah. I had uh, started out as the squad radio operator that had never had any training whatsoever and I knew some of the phonetic alphabet. Abel, Baker, Charlie, which I had learned from watching John Alpha, Wayne movies. Alpha, <laughs> Alpha. Come on, no, get no, it right. No, no, World War II, they used Abel, Baker, oh. Charlie, Dog. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that, uh, you know, by 1968, they'd actually, or 69, uh, they changed it to the NATO code, you know, Alpha, Bravo. Uh, you know, I, I know some of that now, but then I didn't. I didn't know how to change the battery on it or anything like that. But Moon, being the great skater, within uh, oh, it was um, the day the day that we went across the song through Vaughn or whatever on those Amtrak's. Yeah, they he were. went he he went on R and R. So uh, I became a platoon radio operator, and that was uh, I think what March. Or it was, probably, yeah, yeah uh, early March. So, still didn't know the full yeah. alphabet, but Brookshire tagged me to be his radio operator, which was great. So, Moon comes back. I then go back to squad radio operator. Then, in um, it was April 20, 26th, I'm out on a squad ambush, and I come back, and Moon is lying there with his butt hanging out in the air and a big white patch on it where the shrapnel went through it. So uh, also Captain Fike got hit that night and 17 guys get medevac. I immediately went from squad radio operator to company radio operator. I mean that, that's as high as you're going to go as an 0311. And so that's me as the company radio operator and you can tell on the company radio operator because on the um, far side over there, yep, that uh, right. Prick 25, is a speaker box, speaker so, box. so that, uh, you know, company commander can hear it and stuff, but then everybody else can hear it too, so you had to switch back and forth from that. And I never went anywhere. I wasn't posing for a picture. As a radio <coughs> operator, you always had to be attached to that damn thing, because the last thing in the world you want to know is somebody is yelling, where in the hell's the skipper? And you're asleep, and, and you haven't told him that they want him on the radio and stuff. So yeah, yeah. and and even though I'm, you know, relatively long, young looking there, I was growing my very first mustache, <laughs> and it, it in my mind I visualized it as this thing, almost twice the size as the mustache that Broman was sporting, and it was like this little milk mustache there. And it wasn't too long after that, Pula showed up and said, you know, Corporal and below, no mustaches. And I was ready to go to the brig to save that damn thing. It's too bad that wasn't a better photograph. Uh, <laughs> did, did I have the months correct, April or May? Yep, that was, that was in May. That was in May. Okay. Yeah, I, because I April, well, it could have been May, April no, right? 27th or 28th or whatever. Yeah, I think it was early May. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that was May, because uh, Scro was still there, Pula hadn't showed up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, great, thank you. All right. <laughs> well, who's this squared away young looking guy? No, you're Dan? Right. You're up, Dan. You're up. Yeah, that's what he said square away. And I'm telling us about uh, who is this guy and how much weight do you are you carrying there? And what is that crazy? I was loaded. Uh, I was loaded pretty good. What was that can <laughs> under your armpit? Yeah, that's up. I was, I, was, I was loaded very, very good. But it doesn't. It doesn't have my socks on it. Your socks like, are hanging out dried so, somewhere. Yeah. My socks drying and also carrying all the peanut butter and <coughs> cheese yeah, the, and the, all the good we stuff. We all carried so, our sea rashes yeah. inside of our socks. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did. So, yep, that, that was, I think I just turned <coughs> 19, I think. Okay. No, yeah, just turned 19. You still have that watch? Oh, no, no. No, it's long gone. <laughs> it's long gone. Everything there is long gone. <laughs> Everything there is long gone, buddy. Trust me. 
No okay. training, as Jay said, there was no training. You pick up your radio, like I say, mine was, was quite accident, my third day in country in Way City, <coughs> and I picked up a radio and I carried that little beauty for the next 13 months. <laughs> so. This picture is taken where? You know? No, I don't. Yeah. Looks like Way. Looks like Way to me. No, it's, it, it would be yeah. outside of Way. It was I'm after sure. Way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably just before we all got whacked. <laughs> a good, not a good trip out of way. No, no. No, it's uh, yeah, that's that's it, and that's most of the gear I had to carry. Uh, all right. Yeah, not a whole uh, lot. All right, thanks, Dan. Okay. Um, I don't know. Any of you here take this picture? Anybody remember Snell at all? He was a he was a radio. Uh, and, Two five and there's a uh, uh, Jay. This this picture was taken from your set, so I don't know if you took the picture. Do you remember? I, I didn't know his first name. Snell. Snell. You remember him? No. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. What's he walking through? Right. 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 Okay. All right. Well, there's me uh, with my pack. Um, uh, I was so stupid that I decided that I could carry a hundred pounds on my back at all times. Okay, I did. I wasn't as smart as the rest of these guys. They, they all had lighter packs, but uh, uh, I had more. Uh, underneath my right arm, where my hand is at, is a law L A W, and um, I didn't carry it all the time. Others carried it, but um, uh, I posed for the picture here. Uh, because whenever um, there is an object, uh, a bunker that needs to be blown up, um, or uh, some object or whatever, uh, for some reason, when I was this age, I was able to hit the target every single time. So uh, I would drop my radio pack and, and fire off the law to blow up bunkers. So um, I blew up a lot of bunkers uh, in hotel uh, back in the day. And you can see there on my back, um, there, there's a, um, I carried, how, how many carried more than two canteens of water along with your radio? You carried three? How many carried four? How many carried five? Five canteens, okay? Uh, all right, are you now starting to add up the weight? Okay, to understand how much we were carrying back in the day? Um, all right, and uh, this was taken out in, in the Arizona. Yeah, so I've got at least two or three I'm there, and um, that with that law, yep. uh, and of course, uh, yeah. all right, Gary? Got an ammo you right here. Yeah. We want to help it. Yeah, but all right, is it you? Uh, all right, uh, Jay, tell us how this all came about. Well, that, okay. that was taken you were with uh, F1 or whatever. H and S. Yeah, you, you were the uh, uh, bodyguard yeah. or whatever. <laughs> By then, I had worked my way up to S3, and I owe that promotion to Mike Burton here. He, he saved my butt. He, uh, I, I got medevac, came back, and. After I came back, I don't know who was the company radio operator at that point in time, but I didn't want to get him kicked out of that position. So I said, yeah, just send me wherever you need me. And they did. They sent me to second platoon. I think Mike was, uh, at that point in time, second platoon radio operator. Yeah, and, and uh, so he said, well, here, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, go to this squad here or whatever. And before he sent me to the squad, he says, well, wait a minute, Lieutenant Andrea here needs a radio operator. And so I got sent to second platoon to act as the platoon radio operator for Lieutenant Andrea. And I always thought he was doing me a favor, except he's, he's telling me now, after we've gotten together and talked about this, that he always thought that Andrea was trying to get him killed. <laughs> so. I, I went to 2nd uh, Platoon, Andrea, um, was there for a couple of months, and then there was an uh, incident. We were at Hill 65 doing security along the river, 
called in a medevac, and by then I knew what the hell I was doing, and we were right below the hill, and everybody on the hill heard it, it was being monitored up there, and one of the guys listening to it was the S3 assistant, um, Lieutenant Brookshire, and that's the guy who I had become, you know, uh, I'd gone from uh, squad to uh, platoon to company radio operator with Brookshire, and he heard that, and recognized who it was, and he pulled me up onto the hill to go to S3 out of the bush. And, and we're talking, you know, you, you go from a, a canvas uh, cover or a plastic cover or whatever, and you go to Hill 65 with real hooches, tin <coughs> roofs, um, good a chow hall. I mean, this is seventh heaven. And, and I, I'm under uh, working as an assistant for a major driver, great guy. And we're, we're there for about a month. And I think it was October when this was taken, or thereabouts? Uh, this is late August. Okay, late August. Driver pulls us in there and says, okay, the, the battalion, the entire battalion is going to the bush. And I'm thinking, wow, it really sucks to be these guys. They're going back to the bush and stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm going to be on Hill 65 watching the whole show because you can see it. And he says, and we're going with them. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That, that picture was taken in the bush. Uh, that's uh, that's out uh, either the Funans or on our way to Arizona. No, no we were in the Arizona. We we're in the Arizona. Yeah, because the other pictures around it uh, are in the Arizona. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is Jay um, uh, on the left. That's me on the right. Okay. And um, May 11th, 1969, uh, we come down uh, off of Charlie Ridge. Mm -hmm. And um, we moved out and chased a bunch of um, MBA in the Arizona Territory. We got into a big firefight about four o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, I crashed and uh, I had a heat stroke. And uh, I was medevaced um, on May 11th. And um, uh, after four days of being in a coma, I, I came to um, in Da Nang at the Navy uh, Hospital there. And um, after that event, um, they decided, usually if you have a heat stroke, it's gonna be a recurring thing. So they send you back to Okinawa or to Germany or somewhere else. Well, with my luck, they sent me back to a place called Anwa. <laughs> okay? Uh, and they gave me four weeks of not light duty, no duty for four weeks. And so during that four weeks, I was going crazy. I wanted to get out of the bush. I wanted to get back with the guys, okay? I, I was in second of the two. Uh, and that's why um, uh, Mike actually picked up after me. He probably didn't realize that, but I got medevac, so he picked up the radio. and It took my spot, because I was a platoon um, um, radio operator at that point in time. So four weeks of the uh, four weeks in Anwa in the rear area. I'm not out with the guys fighting every day and chasing Charlie. So um, um, the sergeant major noticed that uh, uh, I was a little antsy, and I began to volunteer to try to get mail out to the bush, try to get some hot meals out of the bush. Uh, I became acquainted with the um, um, chaplain, and uh, so I got the permission to go out on. Uh, resupply helicopters and uh, bring out the mail um, uh, to the guys and I bring out packages uh, to uh, you guys this is all in in uh, the month of June and at the end of June the sergeant major came to me and uh, he uh, asked me one question he said uh, have you ever driven uh, a tractor and I said yes he said uh, how old were you and I said 12 when I started driving a tractor and uh, he said, good, you're qualified. You are now um, a radio operator, a Jeep driver, a personal bodyguard to the, uh, the CO, uh, which is the Lieutenant Colonel of 2-5 Battalion. So uh, I ended up um, doing all those duties along with learning how to um, barbecue hamburgers <laughs> uh, uh, and, and all that kind of good stuff, uh, make 
make uh, great stakes and so on because the sergeant major, uh, he's responsible at the battalion level for all the logistics of everything. So he handles all the food, he handles all the transportation, he handles um, uh, communications and, and on and on, a lot of stuff. Um, getting, getting resupplies of ammo, all that type of stuff. Um, and, and then, uh, of course, the, the lieutenant colonel in charge of the battalion uh, is involved with operations uh, from day to day, week to week. And uh, so I was lucky enough to get pulled out of a uh, hotel and, and went to uh, two, two five. So um, uh, when I first was introduced to these reunions, uh, Jay um, got a hold of me, tracked me down and uh, found me. And I didn't know about these reunions. And uh, Jay sent me this picture one day, and he says, I have no idea who this guy is that's in this picture with me. Do you know who it is? <laughs> Remember that, Jay? Yeah. I'm telling the truth, right? <laughs> you're, you're not the only guy I sent pictures to and said, I don't know who the hell this guy is. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it turned out to be me. Um, and here we are at the h and CP together. Uh, um, all right. Uh, well, let's see what they can remember about uh, being radio men and their radios. Okay, um, we're just going to go straight down the line real fast. Okay, what was your radio call sign? Mike? I don't know. Don't know? <laughs> okay, a, do you remember your call sign? Well, yeah, it started out as one Dan? alpha. Blackhawk. Blackhawk. I can recall four of the battalion call signs. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that question. Oh, oh okay. 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 I, I was oh. Hotel 1-4. Yeah. Hotel 1-4? Hotel 1-4. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was yeah. either, you know, started out yeah. as one alpha, yeah. then uh, moved to one actual. You know, you, you were just whoever you were yeah. next yeah. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was two alpha. Yeah. I was Hotel 6. Hotel 6? Yep. Uh, okay, hotel so. Hotel. <laughs> yeah. How in the world do you guys still remember your call signs after all these years with all this gray hair? <laughs> Huh? How many times? All right. Hear it? What was the name and model of your radio? It's the PRC 25. Yours is 25. Same thing. 25, Dan? 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. Dave, you had 25? 25. 25. Okay, and mine was a 25 as well. Uh, all right, here's the 25. This is what it looks like. Okay. It was also known as a what, guys? Frick 25. 25, okay, because uh, it was a monster of a beast, and um, um, and there it is, and uh, you can see uh, kind of rudiment, rudimentary um, radio. Um, okay, how much did it weigh? A lot. Too much. How much, guys? 11 pounds. 11 pounds? I don't know. No. Uh, okay. So how much did your radio weigh? I don't remember. Don't remember? <laughs> 25 pounds. 25 pounds, okay. Uh, Plus seven with extra batteries. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And smoke grenades. Did, did you see my presentation already? You cheated, right? Yeah. What's that? Okay. No, I, I just remember because I couldn't throw it that far and I really needed to a couple of times. <laughs> How much did the battery weigh? Well, they had they had different batteries. They started out with a real heavy one, then they went to a light one yeah. in uh, May or whatever. But the the light one in May had these individual cells, and you could not break it up because each cell had a charge to it. So it was like the the most worthless piece of crap because even when it was dead and wouldn't run the radio, yep. it would still set off a one five five or whatever. Right. And so. Yeah, it, oh, yeah. But it was a lighter, much lighter battery. Yeah, we, yep. could, we could carry yeah. three then. Yeah, uh, each battery weighed between four and a half to five pounds. How many of you carried two batteries? Always carried a spare, yep. okay? Uh, three. Dave, you had three? Yeah. Three batteries you carried? Dan, three? Two. Two, uh, okay. Uh, all right, so you can see here uh, just lots and lots of weight. Well, you forgot about the smoke yet, Carrie. Oh, oh, we're coming. We're Red. coming up on it. Yeah, well, yeah. Settle down. Settle down. Yeah. All right. All right. Pop a smoke. Boy, I'm getting their brains going, aren't I? Okay. How many antennas did, did you have, Mike? Two. Two? What were they? A whip and a regular. And how tall was the whip? Ten foot. And how tall was the regular? Three. Three? Yep. Okay. Everybody the same? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. All of us had the same. 
Uh, there they are, two. There's a three foot uh, whip antenna, and um, it's, it's called a whip because um, you could uh, bend it. And um, where did all of you guys, real quick going down the list, where, where did you um, always have your straight up in the air every time you were walking? Or run, it down you your, oh, run it down your strap. Bend okay, down, down your strap. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was bent over and down um, in, in front of us, okay? Um, and, and sometimes mine would want to just flop up and I'd have to grab a hold of it, you know, while we're running, especially if we're running, okay? Um, all right. Um, the 10 foot was a folding antenna for combat operators uh, and CPUs, um, uh, and they had a little bit longer range antenna. Uh, okay, we already answered this three foot and 10 foot uh, on the antenna. Where was the battery located, guys? Bottom. Bottom. On the bottom of the radio, okay. Um, all right, that's correct. You can see there's a picture uh, of having the battery swapped out, okay, at the bottom. Were the handsets waterproof? No. No, no. they were not, okay. And so, guys, what, what did we do? The battery was wrapped in what? Plastic bag. Plastic bag. bag. What did we use that plastic bag for? Handsets. Handsets. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I used my plastic bag that covered the extra battery as, as well as all the rest of you did. Um, uh, so especially when we were crossing rivers um, or in streams, but also during the monsoon, monsoon season and that constant, constant rain. We had to keep our handsets dry or they, they would short out and wouldn't work. So, uh, so we always had to worry about maintenance um, on our radios. How many handsets um, uh, can you connect to the PRC-25? Two. 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 Okay. Why two? Well, one, 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 for the the boss, boss. one for the boss and one for yeah. you. Correct. Correct. One exactly. Everybody you. hear that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but most of the time, we always had one because we would just hand it over, right? Right. right. So. Um, how close did you always stand next to your officer? Attached to hip. Way too close. Hip to hip, all the time. But okay. how many times they tell you, get away from her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, get away, get away. Especially if you came to a stop, okay? Yeah, so we had to get away to stop or everybody got down to, to be seated because of a booby trap or something that was in our way. You could get away. New officers always tell us, get away, get away, back up. Okay. Yeah, but then they call you right back over. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, there's the two different handsets um, that are there, the 138U and the 189 GR um, handsets and, and the connectors uh, that went there. Um, so um, uh, did anybody have the 138 with a weird little um, microphone that pulled down? No. No, No, I, I didn't either. Uh, mine was the GR, okay, that was the fixed one there. Okay, uh, all right. Let's go to start reciting the phonetic alphabet, and we're not doing Jay's phonetic alphabet. We're doing. It was good enough for John one, okay? Wayne. Uh, all right, are we ready, guys? Let's start with A. Alpha. 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 Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Fox, Golf, Hotel, one of you volunteered to stand up and, and uh, just um, uh, start uh, talking to me like I'm on the radio with you. Uh, better yet, you're talking to Barry over here on the radio. Okay. So I have a conversation using the phonetic alphabet. Anybody want to volunteer to do that, please, real quick? No, I can. It's got to be one of you guys. You've been, you've had the um, training. Yeah. Well, I, I had the formal training, so I obviously I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it would just be you'd be talking and say, uh, I remember that, especially when we had the D Coast W go shackle. I shackle Alpha Bravo Charlie unshackle Delta Echo Fox unshackle, uh, and it was Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta Echo Fox golf in. Hotel India, Juliet, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray. Say it again. Let me tell you this much. My wife's back there 54 years. 
uh, her cousin was in the Air Force and was a, uh, was also a radio man. And we used to play pinochle together. And he'd said to her, and he'd go, do you have a Hotel Echo uh, Alpha Romeo Tangos, which is hearts. And uh, they would never figure it out. We would talk across the board and went every time because we knew the phonetic alphabet. Yeah. So the only thing that helped me, it helped me win it, it's at arts. All right. Thank you, Andy. All right. Uh, what was the purpose of the squelch and the non squelch function? Turn off the background noise. Stand up so everybody hear you. Turn off the background noise on the radio. Uh, okay. Um, you got another started. answer? Yeah, well, that's a good answer. answer. A better answer. Go shh. <laughs> yeah, it would go. It was, it'd go shh. Yeah. But but why why would we turn the squelch on? So nobody hears. So because you we hear an ambush. You say, give me two right, pushes. Right. Right. Give but me if you're on an ambush, you want to not. Yeah. You, you turn the squelch yeah. off so that right. nobody can hear you. Okay. Uh, the radios were intelligent enough to not only send a signal but also receive a signal. And so the squelch was involved in, in handling that function. Um, there it all is, and we're going to skip over it. I'm not going to read it. Um, but um, it was an important um, function. But for most of us, it was just a rushing nuisance of a noise that usually um, um, we, we didn't want in the middle of the night because we'd start getting the snipe dad okay, if, it, if the radio started talking. Okay, what was those uh, round canister grenades used for, guys? Oh, oh, oh. How many did you carry? Three. Two I carried ones. like probably four. Two more. Four. Side. Four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody have anybody have a, a preference on what color you carry? We always carry different colors because yeah. when you got the informed observer, he said, hey, well, what color did you pop? And so you always had to have red, green, yeah, and yellow, yellow because green. you never wanted to keep the same color. Okay, yeah. did, did all of you call call in um, uh, Medivax or yeah. call in? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, how many of you uh, had to be standing on an LZ bringing in a, co bringing in a chopper? Raise your hand. Thank all of us, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part? Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Uh, so we use these smokes, and guess what? Charlie used these smokes too, okay? They were pretty smart, so that's why we had to be very careful um, uh, when we were uh, marking a, a position out. So sometimes we would do a couple of colors um, uh, for, uh, especially if it was a hot LZ. What do I mean by hot LZ? Well, you would have to throw the smoke and ask the chopper pilot to identify. We wouldn't Correct. tell them what color Correct. we threw out. Correct, yeah, and then we would confirm that, yeah, you, you've got the right You've got the right uh, smokes. Um, okay, how long did they burn for? Oh, jeez. <laughs> a minute to a minute and a half, okay, is, is how long. Uh, okay. And, uh, long enough to turn things thing. on fire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, um, I, I never, how many of you threw years overhand? I never did. I always pitched mine under it. Which 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 way did you guys use? Yours? Depends on how far yeah, you, you wanted to Yeah, it all depends where you all were. Depends. Yeah. Uh, depending <laughs> on how bad I was pinned down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah were you, you laying on the ground? About Thirty meters max. Um, uh, again with the smokes. All right. What are the specs for the PRC twenty five? Anybody know the frequency numbers? Who the hell cares? You know what? I have my cares? book yeah. upstairs. I still have it. You still have it? Yeah. I'm sorry. It has all the frequencies for the whole. Uh, okay. The whole. Uh, I don't remember the frequency. Company. Yeah. They took. What, what does the PRC uh, 25 stand for? Does Personal radio for? communication. Say that again. Personal radio communication. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, it signified uh, two different things: either Army, Navy, portable radio. That's what PRC stood for. Uh, uh, used for two-way communications with the C. The 25 was the wattage of the radio. Uh, or some people always said it was the 25th manufacturing revision of the radio. Uh, I, I don't believe that because um, all the radios I picked up, how many had the same one the whole time? Yeah, no, most of us, say, most of us yeah. had had it swapped out from time to time. Mine decided um, to take a You go on an R&R, &R, come back, and you got a different radio. Uh, 
Um, I can't all right, so there's the PRC um, uh, antennas and the battery power that's there. How long did the batteries last if you didn't use the bat if you didn't use the radio much? How many days? Well, you tell the next resupply. <laughs> yes, the next resupply. Yeah, yeah. Usually about four days, but if but if there's a lot of chatter, a lot of communications going on, and folks, I apologize. I went my back to you all evening, so forgive me. Um, but uh, uh, typically, uh, they would last uh, only a few hours if we're if we're uh, in the middle of a firefight or if we're uh, doing a lot of communications uh, because uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of activity going on. Uh, during that time period, okay? Um, all right. In 1965, General Creighton Adams called the PRC-25 the most important tactical item in Vietnam today. More important than the M-16 rifle, more important than the Huey helicopter. Why did General Abrams make that comment, gentlemen? What was more powerful, your radio or your M-16? Like radio call strikes, airstrikes, artillery. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis, throw out a number. How, how, how many uh, how many mortar strikes did you call in in Vietnam? Whiskey One, battery. five, a hundred. <laughs> well, no mortar, which is artillery. Artillery. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, artillery. Yeah, well, wasn't it with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, always right. Artillery. Yeah, yeah, could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot more power than your M16 or your oh, yeah. 5 yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we all uh, found that out. And um, one of the one of the other wonderful things about the radio was that um, it was our best friend when it was time to call in Betavax. Okay, uh, everybody. Called in Medivacs, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Yep. I never knew. Uh, okay. 